Every year at this time, we jump into the middle of a story that's been told for hundreds of years. It's a story of cities decorating their streets and their sidewalks. It's a story of trees and ornaments and fireplaces, of gifts and wrapping paper and ribbons. There's expectation and wonder and hope, a deep hope that drives us back to the beginning of the story. Because it all starts here. It starts in a manger with a baby and an angel and a scared teenage girl in love with a misunderstood young man who thinks she's worth it. It's about a child who will bring light into darkness, joy into despair, revealing a God who will redeem it all. A God who is leaving the glory of heaven to pursue the glory of a cross. A God who is becoming flesh and blood and skin. A God who is loving and offering all people a pathway back into the relationship for which they were created. It's too rich to comprehend and too beautiful to dismiss. This is Christmas. This is the story of stories. And it all starts here. Well, good evening and Merry Christmas to you. Uh, my name is Pastor Jeff Little, and I welcome you tonight as we celebrate the birth of our King. Let's join together with our opening hymn, uh, Hark the Herald Angels Sing. I'm going to invite Bill and Kathy Winters up to light our Advent candles, and we'll be singing the way in a manger, but you can stay seated.
require? First scripture reading is going to be read by Garrick Jordan. Isaiah two or Isaiah nine, two through seven. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of a deep darkness a light has dawned. You have enlarged the nation and increased their joy. They rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest, as warriors rejoice when dividing the plunder. For as in the day of Midian's defeat, you have shattered the yoke that burdens them, the board across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor. Every warrior's boot used in battle and every garment rolled in blood will be destined for burning, will be fuel for the fire. For unto us a child is born, Unto us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this.
the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let's take some time this evening to pray. Pray with me. Lord God, we thank you for this time that we can gather. Thank you for a time that we can be with family. We thank you for Christmas. And we lift up praises and and honor to you, God in heaven, for such a time. Lord, we, we give our praises to you and we confess that we are a people that walk in darkness and that we need to see your light. We ask that you would forgive us for the times that we sin, the times that we turn our back towards you. Lord, we are so inconsistent sometimes in our walk, and we ask for your forgiveness. But we thank you. Thank you so much for Jesus and what that brings to our world, what that means for us. And as we explore and think about that this evening, we pray that our hearts would be open to receive And we pray that we would live accordingly. And Lord, as we we pray this tonight, we are reminded that there are people who are are not doing the best tonight. We pray for them. We pray for those who are sick. We pray for those who might be fighting for their lives tonight. We lift them up. We pray for those who are preparing for, for surgeries or procedures of some kind. We lift them up as well. We pray for those people who are caregivers, whether they do it professionally or whether they are taking care of a loved one. We pray that you would give them the strength and the endurance to to do the task at hand. And we thank you for them. And Lord, we want to pray for those who might not be dealing um, with things well emotionally. They might have emotional stress. They may have some 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 things that they need to work out. And Lord, we just lift them up. Lord, we also want to pray for those who may not be doing the best uh, financially this Christmas season. We pray that you would teach us how to be the church in those cir- circumstances. And Lord, we, we also thank you for the way that you've taught us so many things through how you lived your life. And one of the things you you taught us is how to pray. And we thank you for the prayer that you taught us. And we, we, we pray that prayer this evening together saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. and Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Let's join together with our, our second Christmas carol tonight. If you're able to, stand as we sing Joy to the World, verses 1, 2, and 4.
seated. The kids would want to come forward for a children's moment. Uh, come on forward. Okay, you guys can have a seat in the pews. So good evening, everybody. So tonight, I have an important job for you all. I need you to help me decorate this Christmas tree. So it's going to tell us the story of Jesus' birth. Now, if we look at the tree, we can see that it points heavenward, and that's to remind us that it, the story begins with our loving God. And the tree is green, and that represents our eternal life in Jesus. So we need lights on our tree to lighten the darkness and make the tree bright. So who would like to light the Christmas tree for me? Meredith, come on up. And you can just plug the, the green plug into the brown one, please. So Jesus is the light of the world, and he overcame the darkness of sin. And it's through Jesus, our Savior, that we can become forgiven children of God. Thank you, Meredith. So now we need some ornaments for our tree. Who would like to help hang some ornaments up? So you can go ahead and hang this on the tree. Do you want one, Rory, to hang? Okay. Does anyone want to go up and hang one up? Okay. So these ornaments tell the, st the story of Christmas and the real reason that we celebrate. These ornaments have Mary and Joseph and baby Jesus on them. They're the nativity scene, and they remind us that Jesus, our Savior, is born. So now we need some angels. Who would like to hang some angels on our tree? Okay. So these angels, in Luke chapter 2, verses 11 to 20, it tells us that Jesus was born in Bethlehem. And angels announced Jesus' birth to the shepherds, and then the shepherds went, and they found baby Jesus, and they joyfully shared this good news. So next we need some gifts under our tree, so I need two helpers to move these gifts over. So um, Franklin, you can come up and put the red one under, and would you like to put the the other one under the tree. Thank you. So help us, God, to remember as we place these gifts here that the real gift and the best gift is Jesus, our Savior so dear. And we celebrate with gifts because God gave us the gift of his son. So we're almost ready. Our tree is almost done. There's one more thing we need to do. What do we need to do? The star. So who would like to help hang the star up? Okay, Meredith, so you can put our star, and I'm going to help hold this because it's a little bit tricky to put on. So you can put that right on the top. So this helps us to remember the special Christmas star God put in the sky that very first Christmas, and the bright star signaled that Jesus is the Savior for all who believe everywhere. So thank you, boys and girls, for your help decorating our tree. And I have something for you before you go like but back to your seat, but we're going to have a word of prayer first, okay? So let's pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, thank you so much for showing your great love for us by sending your son Jesus to save us. Help us to remember the real meaning of the Christmas season, and it's that you came to save us of our sin. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So I have something for you inside this box. Open it up, and would you look there? There's a copy of the book that we talked about today for each of you so that you can remember the meaning of the Christmas tree. So Merry Christmas, boys and girls. You're welcome. And you can head back to your seats. You're welcome. Our offering this evening is going to uh, be used in our church for our, our 
outreach events that we're going to be doing throughout the year. Um, we've had some wonderful celebrations with our Vacation Bible School and also our, our tractor parade event that we did. And um, we're looking forward to another one coming up on March 18th that we're going to be doing a craft show. And different opportunities to, to uh, reach out to our community in the ways that God leads us to do so. Um, we are so grateful for a community that we can reach out to. So that's where we're going to, to, to put our offering towards this year. And I'm going to ask the ushers if they would come forward, and we're going to take our Christmas offering. And choir.
is God from whom all blessings flow. <coughs> Praise Him of creatures here below. Praise Him of all the heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Lord God, we thank you for this offering that we are receiving tonight. We pray that it would be used to communicate your kingdom to our world. We thank you for such an opportunity, and we ask you to bless us in the process. And we just pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. I'm going to invite Nancy Smith up to read our, our second scripture tonight. Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 20. Second, verses 1 through 20, the birth of Jesus. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree the census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and the line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn son, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today is a, in the town of David a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and laying in the manger. Suddenly a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest of heaven, and on earth peace to those of whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the babe who was lying in a manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what they had been told about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherd said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen were just as they had been told. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
messages, um, they're all around us, aren't they? Uh, a communication of some kind. Uh, if we listen and pay attention, um, I believe that the average human being receives hundreds, if not thousands, of messages each day. Think about it. There's, there's news and television shows. They give us messages, right? There are billboards and signs outside businesses and church that communicate some kind of message. There is emailing and faxing, and, and of course, there's always something that we call snail mail. Um, when was the last time you wrote a letter? Um, can anybody remember? When was the last time you received a letter? You know, the art of letter writing has kind of died. We need to get that going again. Can you imagine if we did that? We talk on the phone too, right? Um, and, and we can do that anytime now and anywhere. Our phones go with us 24-7. And not only just talking, but texting as well. No need for an answering machine. Remember those archaic devices? Now, I'm going to de- date myself as we talk about messaging and how it's um, changed over the years. I remember when I first got my computers. This would probably have been back in in the 90s. Um, and I was working on a document, and from out of nowhere, this box popped up, and it was a friend of mine that I hadn't talked with in a long time. And I said, how are you doing this? And he says, well, I have this thing called America Online. Do you remember that device? Um, and he was using an instant messenger. I thought it was pretty amazing at the time, but now we have instant messaging all over the place. And if it takes us a few seconds longer to message someone than we want it to, we get really frustrated, don't we? We also have all kinds of social media to communicate too. Um, Like I remember one of the first social media things that I had was something called MySpace. I was hip having a MySpace account, if you remember that at all. Um, And then there was Facebook. And, you know, though, you know what? The youth have just told me a few weeks ago when we were talking about social media that only old people use Facebook. And I guess I'm an old person now. Um, I did tell them that I do have an Instagram account, and they were really surprised that I had Snapchat. And they asked me, what is your score on Snapchat? And, And my response was, You keep score on Snapchat? So I need to learn that. But there is all kinds of of messages um, at at hand. And you know what? The the shepherds um, in our day and age, you know, if, if they were out in the field watching the flocks by night, they'd probably be on their cell phone, right? And then the glow of their phones would probably light up the sky. So it makes me think maybe Jesus came at just the right time so that they wouldn't be distracted. Um, So if you are looking at your cell phone right now, please put it away. Um, (laughs) Let us focus on the message at hand. For another way to get a a message is by, by listening and looking at God's word and remembering. So so let's go back to that night a long long time ago. For there were shepherds keeping watch over their flocks by night. Now now you rem- you may remember um, a theologian that talks about this Christmas story every Christmas season. Um, his name is Linus and, and he's reciting the scripture. And one of the youth at our Christmas uh, gathering a couple, this past Sunday was able to recite the whole scripture at the Christmas party. And I asked her how she was able to do that. And she says, I've seen the Christmas special from Charlie Brown a hundred times. But there were shepherds watching over their sheep. And it was night. So, so you know what? It was dark. And an angel appeared to them. And the scripture tells us that they were terrified. Now, I really like the way that this, the King James says it, that they were sore afraid. They were really scared. You know, we've been looking at the whole issue or uh, the, the interactions with people and angels throughout this whole season of, of Christmas, of Advent. And one of the things that was in common in all the angel experience are the angels saying, do not be afraid. 
Well, you know what? That got me thinking, what do these angels look like? You know? So I went online and I searched for images of a biblical angel. And I think that these images come from the description of angels from the prophet Ezekiel and Isaiah in the Old Testament. But take a gander at some of these. Here's one a biblical. Uh, it's pretty scary. See the eye in the middle? Um, and there's some eyes on the wings. And, and this one has a bunch of eyes and, and the, the, um, the, the, the wings coming forth. And then somebody, I don't know if they did this on a computer or made a sculpture. You can see all the eyes. But it, I, I, if I saw something like that in a field and it was dark, I'd be pretty scared. Um, I am sure I would have been sore afraid. It makes me think of the show Stranger Things, if you've ever seen it. Um, But then again, if we look in our Easter passages where angels show up again, they appear as men. So we really don't know what they look like. It could have been just that that it was startling to see somebody and and the light they brought with them because they came with the glory of the Lord shining around them. And that may have been enough to overwhelm them. The shepherds were in the presence of angels. And one of the things that, that we, we did uh, during the season of Advent, um, when we looked at angels, we looked at some of the original language that this, these scripture passages were, were, um, were from. And we learned during our time together that the angel's primary task is to bring a message, to bring a message. They are beings that are created by God, we heard. And, and if we're going to rank humans and angels, angels rank just a little bit above humans. They rank higher than we do. But they are actually face-to-face with God, in the presence of God. So therefore, the messages that they bring us are actually from Almighty God. Now, this might seem pretty far-fetched to you, um, it may seem like a fairy tale. It may seem like it's supernatural. But you know what? If we read Scripture, and if you've experienced the Holy Spirit, the Scripture is full um, of, of supernatural. It is part of our story. And I believe that these angels are real. Anyway, we could debate on this, and that can come at a different time. But they brought a message, and the message is this. I bring you good news that will become, that will cause great joy for all the people. For today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. And this will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Now, this is a big sign for us today, um, thinking about the messages that we all get and, and, and the message that we need a Savior, that the Savior has come, the Savior to save us from our sins. But if you go back and look at who the, the, the shepherds were um, at the time that this message was originally given, it was a huge, huge me- message for them. It was a huge hope. It was the people were oppressed and they had been waiting for hundreds and hundreds of years for the Messiah And the Messiah, they hear, is coming. So it's huge. And the message of the angels coming to the the shepherds was huge. Um, And and there was a choir of heavenly hosts singing, and they were shouting. It doesn't say necessarily uh, uh, singing, but they were shouting, glory to God in the highest. Or another way to say this is gloria in excelsis Deo. It would have been spectacular. It would have been amazing. And something else that we need to know is that the shepherds that heard this message, that the angels appeared to, the ones that uh, they came to, to share this incredible news with, they were not the most liked in their world. They would probably be considered what we would call today as low life. We might um, call them robbers and thieves for they would take their flocks onto properties that were not theirs and the sheep would eat on the properties. And you can imagine, sheep's probably, sheep are probably not going to, to leave it undamaged. So they were low life. 
these shepherds were robbers. They were trespassers. And these are the people that get to see the Messiah first. These are the ones that get to hear the message first. This shows us that the newborn king, folks, came for all people. And, and that those of us that think we are righteous and deserving, we might just take a back seat to these shepherds. So the, the shepherds went to see the baby and, and they were filled with so much joy and so much excitement. Like a child on Christmas Eve. They were so full of excitement that they had to just go tell someone. I don't know if you've ever heard news or, or you've heard something that you are just, I just can't wait to tell so-and-so. I have to tell everyone about this. Thus, they became the first evangelists. They became the first missionaries for Jesus. The first people to share Jesus with their people. So the question then becomes, what about us? Are you receiving this message tonight? Um, does the message of the angel that we looked at tonight bring you joy and excitement? Do you want to tell other people about it? Does it bring you wonder? Or are you checking your phone and hoping that by some miracle that that package has arrived and won't be late for Christmas? What is the message that you are hoping to receive? We can be a distracted people, right? And this message, this message that I'm giving tonight um, may seem worn out to you. I heard that last year, Pastor Jeff. I, I heard it two years ago. I heard it the year before that. And I'll probably hear it next year. The message hasn't changed. But we do. You know, we are a people now that have, have been through a worldwide pandemic you know, and we're probably still in the midst of it as we see numbers climb or go down or, or whatever. We are a people who are, are probably more, more polarized than at least I've ever seen in my life. We are a people who trust leadership less and less. We are a people who receive messages in a different way than the shepherds do. Yet we are a people that need to receive this message, the message of a Savior. The peace has been restored. The people who are walking in darkness now see a great light. Are you walking in darkness tonight? Maybe it's time to let it go. Look into the light. Look into this hope. Maybe it's time to, to talk to someone if you, if you have something that you need help with. Someone to help you with your darkness. For sometimes we all need help. I'm here and, and, and more than willing to, to pray and talk with you. You know, I have to look to the light too. Sometimes I need help. You know, my ultimate favorite time of Christmas and Advent is the lighting of the candles on Christmas Eve. It's my... It's my ultimate uh, experience. I, I just always look forward to it. Even as a child, I couldn't wait for it. It reminds me of the light that I need in my life, the presence of God. It reminds me that Jesus came into the world to restore a broken relationship, to restore things, that he is the Messiah. You know, as we look at the Advent candle, we see the middle candle being the tallest one, it's white, and it represents to us Christ, the Messiah, the chosen one. It's surrounded by candles that represent hope, love, peace, and joy. And one of the things that I know when I think about those things, hope, joy, peace, and love, those are the things that really only God can give us. And those who walk with God can then experience that and give to others. When we follow his example, I believe we can show these too. This is the time of year, folks, that we receive 
the light, the message. You know, we talked about um, getting messages from in all different kinds of ways. But this message is paramount. This message is important. We receive the light and we shine it throughout our church. And, and this is a reminder that the light can spread and give to others that might need this light and that we need this light. For we are a people who are walking in darkness and we need this light. We need it this night and I would argue that we need it throughout the year. We need it all the time. It is a reminder tonight of, of the light of Christ, but it, it also should be our reality. So I want to ask you a question tonight. How are you receiving this light? Think about that. When it comes to you, how, ask yourself this question. How is it with my soul? How is it with your soul? You know, we could be in a different place tonight. We could be in a, 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 a huge church with hundreds of people, with praise bands galore. We could be in a smaller or more intimate setting. We could be traveling, if, if the weather would allow us, right, to see family. Or, or maybe we would be just getting together with our family tonight because that's when our family celebrates. And we share the gifts that we lovingly pick out. But we're not there. We are here. So let me ask the question to you again. How is it with your soul? Is this light the hope of the world guiding you? Is it changing you? Is it transforming you? Is it something that you have hope in? Is it something you shine? You know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to invite the ushers to start coming forward um, as we take this light. We're going to take it from the Christ candle tonight. Light the candles. Spread it throughout the church. And the question this Christmas Eve is how is it with your soul?
Yes, the, the light has entered the world. And you know what? We're, we're celebrating the birth. But there's so much more to tell you about. There's miracles. There's parables. There, there is a death and a resurrection that leads us e- into eternal life. Our Savior has come. Uh, let's, let's focus on that redeeming story as we leave um, this place tonight. Let's go forth in peace and may the, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of our Father, and the work of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Merry Christmas. Amen.